Game time, Brian. I, is that is that, hey, Mark? Uh, Mark, is that the guy coming on? Hey, Mark, you can bring DFW and the Dallas Fort Worth area, and it won't matter. You haven't done dick in 30 years. The Pet Rock and the Chia Pet were more famous than Dallas in the last 25 years. Who are you kidding? The Chia Pet is more famous than the Cowboys in the last 30 years. The Chia Pet. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Rise and grind here. Rise and grind. Not as brisk today. Not as brisk. Forgive me last night. I got really tired really fast. Long day. So, I didn't see the end of the games. I saw most of it. But I remember, I missed the... Uh, I missed the Chris Godwin injury. I, I heard he has a dislocated ankle. Well, that's not good. But rise and grind, everybody. Sorry to see injuries like that. It's rough. Uh, especially at the end of a game when it was already over. Shout out to the... First, we'll start out with the Baltimore Ravens. I was a little tough on uh, Lamar, but, you know, like my quarterback, it's all about the playoffs, right? Lamar has not had a lot of playoff success. Wade says he's, he's made it. He's, he has two playoff wins, right? And four losses. And at least once, Lamar lost at home, and he was, I believe they were the number one seed. But regardless, he's obviously a very good quarterback. I was just being a little bit in a weird mood because, you know, everybody likes to move the goalposts. You know, nobody wants to give a quarterbacks any credit for the regular season, but yet Lamar is, is Mr. Regular Season. Come to the playoffs, adjustments are made, they put the game in Lamar's hands, and he, time and time again, lets him down. A lot like Dak. Again, now, I don't believe Dak's as good as Lamar. Let me repeat that. I don't believe Dak is as good as Lamar. But... You are what your record says you are, right, Troy Aikman? So shout out to uh, the Ravens. Your Ravens win last night. Uh, you know, physical game. Derrick Henry. <laughs> Get a load of this. Derrick Henry is on pace to beat the Eric Dickerson rushing record. Yet, we couldn't afford 8 million guarantee. I think you got 10 million a year this year. We couldn't afford that as the Cowboys. Clearly the best running back. I, you know, like physical running back. I would say Saquon is probably the best all-around running back. Nah, I don't know. I, I like Mixon. Just, uh, but, you know, Saquon's right there. You know. Um, I like a lot of these guys. But, come on now. He even said it again recently. He wanted to be a Cowboy. He lives near Frisco. This is why everybody wants to trade Micah. I, I'm on board with it, but not right now. I don't want to trade him now because I don't trust this current regime to do anything. You know, I'm gearing up for two, three years from now. So I know you're going to get less, but if you can give me a one and a two in a year from now, if we're still sitting in the floundering in the same type of spot, then fine. But, you know. Uh, I definitely do not want to trade him uh, by the deadline this year. Absolutely not. That's not a smart move. Uh, saying that, we go to the second game. Uh, ugly, ugly game. James Conner ran hard. Basically put the Cardinals on his back. James Conner busted up the ass of that uh, John, uh, John Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh. Woo! Jim Harbaugh goes down. It was kind of a bad call at the end of a game. His receiver was held, but Jim Harbaugh, that's what happens. Dallas does that all the time. They allow games, well, not so much this year, but they allow games to be close. It's, and once you put it in the referee's hand, shit happens, literally. If any of my friends are UFC fans, uh... UFC, it happens all the time. You go to the judges, man. You go to the judges' scorecards, shit's gonna happen. 
Shit is gonna happen. I watched the fight this past weekend on the uh, uh, my guy from uh, a Connors camp, uh, a two-time a tough winner. Put it in the comments. I thought he won the fight. He, he was fighting a 15 and 0 dude. Um, I can't think of his name. He won tough twice, but he let it go. I mean, I thought he w definitely won. He was more active and uh, by a little bit. And uh, I can't think of his name. But anyway, yeah, I thought he won. So you leave it in the judge's hands or you leave it close game towards the end of the... If it's close, shit happens. Don't make it close. So shout out to the Cardinals. Uh... You know, the Cardinals uh, have got the W. They're hot and cold team, man. One minute they look real good. The next minute, Kyler's making all kinds of mistakes. So, I kind of think, you know, I like Kyler, but I don't know if Kyler's a guy. He was missing Mike Williams, uh, uh, Marvin Harrison, all game. Marvin Harrison had at least three passes from what I could tell that he broke free was wide open. When he watches the tape... I don't know what's going on, but there doesn't seem to be that connection with Marvin Harrison Jr. Marvin Harrison. Because I was playing primetime Phil. They seem to be real into uh, the fantasy. It's a free league. So I don't get too worked up about free fantasy football league. So congrats to Phil. He beat me. But, uh, you know, didn't take much thought in my lineup. I just... Whoever was there, there you go. Looks good. Uh, but yeah, so they got to get that, you know, their act together there. Why they can't seem to hook up very good. But shout out to the Cardinals. They go to three and four. Three and four. Three and four, and they should have won week one. They should be at least four and three. They've blown a couple leads. They're an explosive team at times. So, again, I think the Niners. The Niners are in trouble this year. The Niners are lucky that the Rams have suffered a lot of injuries and the Rams are struggling. Seattle is hot and cold. The Niners busted that ass. Sorry, Ginger Rogers, but, uh, you know, it's uh, anybody's division. I, I tend to think based on the records that the Niners are going to end up being on top, but I hope not because Super Bowl curse is there. The loser in the Super Bowl shit happens. You got Debo Samuel. You got Debo in a hospital with pneumonia. I expect him to be ready for the game, but, you know, they you can recover quick. These athletes can recover real quick. He did have fluid in his lungs, so we'll see. Maybe they'll hold him out a week. Uh, Brandon Ayuk, but that's not what I want. I'm just here to tell everybody I wanted everybody to play, okay? Nobody cares that Dallas is missing half their defense. Everybody's still, ah, you got blown out, you suck. Okay, that's fine. Just keep it real, keep it 100. And when the other team is hurt, you, you know, keep us to that same standard. That's only fair. Um, and I'm in, I'm in bumper to bumper traffic. So with that being said, let me take a hit. Cheers, it's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> Jerry Jones interview this morning, 8.30, so it would be 9.30 my time. 8.30 Dallas time, 8.30 in the morning, he'll be live on the fan. I bet you it's a love fest. I bet you it's a love fest. So 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Texas time. Mountain, I guess they call it. Um, let's see what happens, man. Let's see what happens. Uh... I had told West Virginia Country Boy and the Ward family, I'm not sure what Mark's doing. I don't know. He hasn't told me yet what he's doing. At some point, I need to go buy some tickets. But we couldn't find four in a row that anybody could agree upon. So told everybody to get their own tickets. The one thing I can guarantee you is me and Phil already got our plane tickets. We're locked in. So we're going. Uh, I expect Mark to go. But again... I don't know for sure what's going on with that. Um, you know, we need to figure that out sooner rather than later. But, uh, yeah, so that's what we're looking at, people. We are looking at the 49ers on Sunday night at Levi Stadium. I believe it's still Levi Stadium in San Fran. I think it's going to be a tough game. 
Got my guy Daniel M. Uh, really, want, yeah, he believes in the Cowboys. I, listen, Daniel, I need uh, people like you in the chat to keep me pumped. Uh, I don't know what was going on with him and Twiz. There's nothing wrong with being positive, you know. Um, what happens is when teams get a win or, again, I, I don't even want to go here, but we beat the Giants. They were a horrible team, right? Other teams beat the Giants, I guess, because they held them to three points. I mean, Giants were decimated by, I mean, Giants offensive line stunk. They're losing people left and right. But anyway, circling back. Daniel M. says, uh, you know, he's upset. Everybody's not believing in the Cowboys. Well, Daniel, I don't know how old you are, my man. I don't. And I'm just saying, you should be excited. I haven't left any bandwagon. Again, in this division, sorry. League commander, I've been very, very, very nice. But you should be excited. I'm not going to tell you to count your excitement. You should be excited. I I predicted this. We predict these things. I predicted the Washington Commandos to be good. Nine and eight good, I think. Now they're better than I thought. So as of right now, I think Washington is going to win the division. But Eagles have arguably the, e the easiest schedule in the league. So we'll see. Um, we'll see. It's hard to tell. I don't know anybody that can be that confident in anything. What we know is... Dallas can beat anybody and lose to anybody. Pittsburgh Steelers look damn good. They went on the road in Pittsburgh and won. You know? So, without anybody on their team. With nobody. Just a little update on Micah Parsons. Sorry, Daniel M. To me, it doesn't sound like he's playing. I never... That's a high ankle sprain. He was limping last week. Severely. I find it hard to believe that he's going to play. That thing takes a long time. That takes a long time to heal. He said, who knows? Micah's exact comment was, uh, who knows? Or not sure what's going on with the weekend. Why? Because it's not. Re he's not responding. I don't want Micah playing if he's not 95%. He ain't going to be 100%. I don't want him playing. Sorry, that's me. You got to find a way to get a win. Niners are without a lot of people. They're putting in rookie receivers. Still getting the job done, right? Yeah, they're not winning games, but they're moving the ball. They look competent. And only the Cowboys, when they suffer an injury on the offensive line, that, you know, yeah, they can't seem like to get out of their own way. It seems like every little thing affects the Cowboys. Welcome to the NFL. That's, that's life in the NFL. You can't next man up. I know they say it, but this coaching staff, and it's not just this coaching staff. It's been prior coaching staffs. So actually, I think this year they've won three road games. They're very resilient. I think it's going to be a close game, people. But here's where the difference lies to me, Daniel, with the, with the Cowboys versus the 49ers. If you watched... The uh, Patrick Mahomes led Kansas City Chiefs game this past weekend against the Niners. You need Dak to play somewhere near that. The Niners are going to make plays throughout the whole game on defense. You need your quarterback, especially, sorry to tell you, $60 million highest paid quarterback, to take over the game at times, make a play at times, el elude the rush against a good team, Kind of like what you did against Detroit last year at home. Make a play. Patrick Mahomes continues to do it. It's the subtle things. But people don't realize how good that defense is on the Kansas City side. And I think Patrick... I mean, I think that uh, unless they're working on a good game plan, I think Brock Purdy is going to chew up the, uh, the Cowboys defense. I just do. So... I know... I, you know, I expected the Dallas to put up a lot of points against Detroit. They didn't score a touchdown. So that's where I'm thinking a close game because Dallas finds a way to keep stuff close. But there's no tangible evidence to say that that's going to happen. Now, let's keep it real. I had Dallas 3-4 and four after 7. I, you know, I had them 
going three and three into the bye, I had them losing to the 49ers. Then I had them going on a bit of a winning streak. We'll see about that, right? So I'm almost at Wade's spot, Daniel, where if we lose to the 49ers, then I hope the walls come crumbling down. You know, that's the only real way we're gonna have change. I don't want to, uh, I don't wanna have this false hope. You know, again, I kinda wish we would've let Dak play out his contract and call his bluff. Okay, everybody, I want everybody to understand. If you would have called Dak Prescott's bluff, I think you would have won. I think you wanted to stay in the Dallas area that bad that it may have cost you a couple million dollars more a year, maybe 62. But not real sure about that. Uh, the tax, uh, the state tax is real. No state income tax, I believe. Put in the comments. I think I'm right with that. Um, he wasn't going to New York. Uh, I mean, geez, he just tore down a $3 million house for just to build on top of it. He paid $3 million for land, basically, that he already has. Tore down a perfectly good house to rebuild another house. He wasn't going anywhere. He wanted to stay in Dallas. You should have held off. You should have let... Let these people bid and say, Dak, this is what we can afford. And then put it in his... And he may not have... He may not have uh, stayed. He may have left. But then that would be on his terms. And he could... I, th I think he could have got him for... Yeah, you know, for 60. I don't think anybody else is getting signed right now. So, again, we'll see. We'll see how it shakes out. But a little frustrating now how the... the you know, how the... How he's played. He has not played well. Him and the receivers have not been on the same page. As much as I love uh, uh, Shotty, Schottenheimer, Brian Schottenheimer, something's amiss there. Uh, our offensive line not playing as well as I would have liked. So, and I would say that, you know, I if you had it, put it in the comments. What's one player that this team misses the most? What's the one player that this team misses the most? I'm going to I'm going to tell you it's it's not. I'm going to tell you it's not Micah Parsons. I'm going to tell you it's DeMarcus Lawrence. D-Law is the guy that we miss most. And that's and that's telling people. If you're telling me that DeMarcus Lawrence is the guy that we miss most, Because you know, of his ability against the run, that's an issue. But all right, everybody, I'm at work. Don't forget my 2.33 o'clock lunchtime chat live from the mail truck. I'll talk to everybody later. But yeah, put in the comments, who do you miss most right now that's injured on the Cowboys? Late.